Um, what about how they're different? Well, they're, they're different because odd has that extra one. Have that extra square piece. So, and I colored this one in green. I'll color this one in green as well. So clearly, we have this one that's that's jutting out. Um, another way of looking at it is that the odd integers, they have a column of only one. So it's like they don't have a full column. Um, they're they're missing this guy right here and right here to make a full column. So they, they kind of have like a the a half of a column. Um, number or item five, it says model with mathematics. Which pairs of puzzle pieces can fit together to form rectangles? So those rectangles that they're referring to, these rectangles, it's talking about these two by something rectangles. All right, so that's what we're talking about here. So if we have these four options, which ones can we put together to make? bigger two by something rectangles. Well, um, I don't think it's a stretch of the imagination to say, well, if we could s imagine pushing these two together, they would form that new figure where the height of this rectangle would still be two, but the length would now be P plus M. So I'm going to take that and draw it over here since we got some conveniently placed squares. So I've got the first one that has one, two, three, four, five, right? So this is my first. This is figure A. And then my second figure, we'll put that guy in blue, B. So when I push these together, it's still going to be height of 2, but now, since this, I labeled this as P units long, whatever, and then this was M units long, well, my new rectangle is going to be, um, the, the length will be P plus M. And I know that this, since P and M are integers, whole numbers, because you can't have half of a column, well, whenever I add these two integers, because the fact that integers, the set of integers has closure over the mathematical operation of addition, an integer plus an integer is going to spit out another integer. So in this case, to actually use, to, you know, use the actual values, I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm adding 3 to it. So in this case, this is an 8. So this would be a 2 by 8 rectangle. So we see that those two figures, when put together, they'll just form a bigger rectangle, uh, a bigger integer. Now let's look at these odd integers. Because when we put these together, these two will meet up and form one column, one full column. So I'm going to draw these over here. So I'll, this one's already outlined in red ink here, so uh, I got another two by five here. So this is ten, or let's say, yes, the area is ten. But let's say this is figure C. I'm gonna outline this guy. In blue ink, I almost forgot my little extra dude out there. And then I'm going to draw figure D that connects with it. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Don't quite have enough, but we're going to imagine that we do. There we go. So this is figure D. Well, these two matched up to make that full column. So this rectangle is still a two by something. Well, what's this something? Well, I labeled this as 
p units long, and then I labeled over here that this was t units long, and then we added this one right there. So this new rectangle is going to be a well, well let's, let's talk about this length first. This whole length will be p plus 1 plus t. And so this new rectangle will be a 2 by whatever p plus 1 plus t is. Well, since p is an integer and t is an integer, when you add two integers, you're going to get another integer. And if you add 1 to that integer, you're going to get another integer that's just one greater. So this big ugly mess that we don't know what p is, we don't know what t is, that's okay. When we add it, we're going to get an integer, and when we add one more, it's just going to be another integer. In this case, with this example, um, we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so this was 5 units long, this was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so this was 6 units long. So in this example, we're going to have 5 plus 1, which is 6, plus 6, which is 12, so this would be a 2 by 12. So this new integer, when we add these two figures, would be 24. So which pairs of puzzle pieces can fit together to form rectangles? That would be A and B, then C and D. And this explanation, these drawings, are how and why they fit together. And again, we need to recognize that if we do form these rectangles with no extras, that's an even integer. It's an even integer if it's a rectangle with nothing else, no extra tiles. Moving on, uh, item six, the last item dealing with these geometric um, puzzle pieces is explain how the figures when used as puzzle pieces can be used to show that the conjectures in items one through three are true. So we've already talked about we've already talked about an even plus an even just equals a bigger even, right? We've already talked about how an odd plus an odd, we bring those together, it's just going to be a big even. So the only one we haven't talked about is when we take an even plus an odd. Well, if I have an even, that's going to be some rectangle. It's going to have two rows, and it's going to have however many columns. Let's call that Z columns. If I add that or match it up with an odd number, put that against it, with that extra one, well, when I put these two together, I still have this isolated tile. I still have that extra one that's, that's protruding or, or jutting out of this rectangle. And so if it's not a perfect rectangle, um, that, and we have this extra one, that means it must be an odd integer. So if we wanted to write out, um, let's say that this variable was a, so the orange guy is a 2 by a. Well, this new shape, because we have a 2a plus 1 to get the area of the orange, and we have a 2 times z to get the area of this, and when we add those two together, we're going to get 2z plus 2a plus 1. Or another way of looking at that, let's ignore that, let's just say, hey, we know that this whole shape is going to have the height of 2, and then it's just going to be z plus a. That's going to be the area. So if I want the area of this entire shape, Just looking at this rectangle first, we know the dimensions are 2 by, and then z plus a. And I'm going to have to, once I find the area of that rectangle, I'm just going to have to add on that extra one. But again, because due to the um, closure under the operation of addition, 
z plus a, which are integers, that's just going to produce another integer. That's all it's going to do. All right, so moving on. It says, in items 5 and 6, you proved the conjectures in items 1 through 3 geometrically. It's what we just did. We had shapes, um, and we um, it was a visual explanation. It was It's a very basic elementary explanation, too. I think that your little brother or sister or, or niece or whatever, I think they can figure that it, out. Heck, even your English teacher can probably figure that out. Um, so, no, I'm just joking. Don't tell your English teachers I said that. I love them. I couldn't do what they do. So, much love. Love you, English. Um, so let's move on and let's look at it at an algebraic standpoint. It says, in items 5 and 6, you proved the conjectures in items 1 through 3 geometrically. Cool, got that. In items 7 through 9, you will prove the same conjectures algebraically. So, if we're going to approach it differently, then we need the definitions of our integers to be different as well. And so we're going to, they introduce these two new definitions for an even integer, an odd integer down here. Let's first focus on uh, the even integer. It says this is an algebraic definition of an even integer. It is, an integer is even if and only if it can be written in the form 2 times p, where this variable p must be an integer. Very important that you know the variable must be an integer. And also, in parentheses, the book puts here, it says, you can use any other variable you want, such as 2 times m where m is an integer. Like, it doesn't matter what variable you use. You can have 2 times a, or 2 times m, or 2 times t, 2 times p. doesn't matter as long as a, m, t, and p are integers. These would all be even integers. You just take two times some integer. This should look familiar, 2 times p, 2 times m. That should ring some bells. There's some similarities with this whole geometric proof as well. So it says reason, reason abstractly. So here we go. We're going to try to reason our first conjecture, which was an even plus an even integer equals an even. This is what we're going to try to prove real quick. It says, use the expressions 2p and 2m, where p and m are integers, to confirm the conjecture that the sum of two even integers is another even integer. So, what we're trying to do is we're going to start off with this expression, this expression of the sum of two even integers, one of them being 2 times p, and again, p can be anything, and then 2 times m. Again, m can be anything as long as p and m are integers. That's the only restriction those variables have. If you don't like the variables p and m, use something else. It doesn't matter. So I need to take this expression and get down to the form of an even integer, which is 2 times some integer, let's say a. So I need to manipulate this expression and get it down to 2 times some integer. And that will prove that the sum can be represented as one even integer. So this new variable a, we're going to define it in a little bit. It's got to be an integer. So a is an integer. Let's see what a equals. So here we go. We have two, two terms, 2p two plus 2m. They both have a 2 in common, so I'm going to factor that out. So I'm going to have 2 times the quantity p plus m. Here we go again. You have two integers. It doesn't matter which ones they are. It has no difference what integers they are. But we're going to add these up. Whenever you add two integers together, because there's closure over the set of integers, it's going to be another integer. So if we let a equal p plus m, because we know it's just going to be another integer, then I can replace p plus m with a. And voila we've gotten down to that if you take the sum of two even integers, it's just going to be two times another integer. 